10 days after their bodies were discovered by Israeli forces, the IDF released chilling footage of the terror tunnel in southern Gaza and the horrific conditions in which Hamas terrorists held the six Israeli hostages, Hirsch Goldberg Poland, Eden Yerushalmi, Carmel Gat, Alexander Lubanov, Almog Sarusi, and Ori Danino, and where they were executed just a day before. The shaft leading to the underground tunnel was found in a children's bedroom in a home in Rafah's Tel Sultan neighborhood. The shaft goes down about 20 meters into the ground, using four separate letters. There, it connects to a narrow tunnel with no rooms that is so low, you can't stand up straight in it. The tunnel is about 120 meters long and ends in a blocked iron door. This short blocked part of the tunnel is where the hostages were held and murdered. In the tunnel, there are no air vents. It's extremely humid and difficult to breathe. The footage shows bottles of urine, a bucket used as a makeshift toilet, and a chessboard to pass the time. We know that between two to six terrorists were here with the hostages. We are gathering all the stuff here for forensics, for intelligence, we can see magazines, an AK-47 magazine, chargers, all by the ter- used by the terrorists, Quran books, a hairbrush. We need to we need to check who used it. But there were women here in the tunnel. This is their blood. This is the blood of Hirsch, and then Carmel, Ori. Almog and Alex, they were heroes. The six were held in the tunnel for two to three weeks before their Hamas guards executed them. Their bodies were found in a manner indicating that some of them tried to protect the others, even in their final moments. And they're still hostages, 101. Some of them are alive in the same conditions in tunnels like this in Gaza. And we need to do everything we can in all means in all the means we can to bring them back home alive. As the footage was published, hundreds of protesters demonstrated in Tel Aviv, urging the government to reach a deal to free the hostages. The forum representing the families of the hostages said the video leaves no doubt that their loved ones suffered until their last breaths and warned that the lives of the remaining hostages were hanging by a thread. I came here today to be the voice of 101 hostages and families. I no longer have the privilege to stand idly by, but I also, unfortunately, no longer have what to gain. I no longer have the strength to demonstrate with you, but I have the strength to speak to the hearts of those who may decide. The protests come as talks for a ceasefire and hostage release deal remain stalled, with mediators said to be divided over who is to blame for the failure to reach a deal. I'm convinced, based on what's on paper, what's already been agreed, that we're close. But does that mean that we'll get there? No, because there remain hard issues and ultimately people have to decide. Leaders have to decide. In an attempt to push for a breakthrough in the talks, a number of hostage families met with the Prime Minister of Qatar in Paris alongside former War Cabinet member Benny Gantz. The message of the Qatari negotiator, they continue to be engaged in efforts to bring about humanitarian calm and the release of the hostages. (laughs) 